Okay, well today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about chapter 4 5, which is writing a function rule. So we're going to go from story problems to writing an equation. So I know this is going to be everybody's favorite subject. Oops, went too far. Okay, so it's, the objective is to write equations that represent functions. Uh, A1.2.1 is our standard for today. Okay, and problem one says you can estimate the temperature by counting the number of chirps of the snowy tree cricket. Okay, the outdoor temperature is about 40 degrees Fahrenheit more than one-fourth the number of chirps the cricket makes in one minute. So what is the function rule that represents this situation? So all we're doing is we're writing the function rule. We're not solving. So I think that's one of the biggest problems we have with this is too many times we want to rush into it and try to solve something that really right now we don't need that. Okay, And this should be how you should start every problem, even if you were evaluating. It's just write the equation. Don't try to go to the solution immediately. And I think that's where a lot of us struggle. Okay, So let's look at this. Let's pull out the important information. So really, again, you can estimate blah, blah, blah. All this stuff is really needless. That first line, you can really throw it out. Okay, about the only thing we need to know is that we can count the number of chirps. That's, that's it. Um, the outdoor temperature. Now, here's the key. The outdoor temperature, and then the word is. Is, in mathematics, usually means equals. Okay, temperature. Well, we don't know what the temperature is. So we're going to use a variable. So let's use a capital T. Okay, that's usually what we use for temperatures, capital T. Okay, it's about 40 degrees Fahrenheit more than. So that's another crucial part is more than. More than means comes after, so it means adding. So as we look at that, we can go ahead and say, well, we know we're going to be adding 40 degrees. So then we go to the rest of it is one-fourth the number. So one-fourth means that we're multiplying or dividing by four. Okay, if you get one-fourth your pay, we're cutting it into, we're dividing by four and you get one piece of that. Um, so that's kind of the idea here. Um, the number of chirps, so let's say we'll call it C, is the chirps that it makes. Well, we only want one-fourth of that, so it's one-fourth C. Okay, so we have T equals one-fourth C plus 40. There's your function rule. So it's really that simple. If you just take the second and look at it and not be intimidated by what it's saying on the paper, uh, you just kind of walk through it, read it, make some sense of it. Again, now if we would have said, well, it happens with five minutes, a lot of you would go through and try to solve instead of just trying to set up the problem. So now if I said there was 20 chirps, you could figure this out. Okay, we could go out and actually solve it. So example one there's the information. I want you to go ahead and write the expression. You're not solving. You're just writing the expression. Okay, so make sure you listen to what it's saying and kind of follow through the steps. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at problem number two now. Problem number two is talking about uh, evaluating, actually evaluating. So we're going to start by writing. So just like problem number one, example one, we're just going to write the example. Okay, write the expression. Okay, so this is concert seating plan allows 10 rows and 12 with 12 seats per row for reserved seating and 30 rows with 16 seats per row for general seating. The reserved seats cost $25 but is already sold out. Okay, the general seats cost $10. Okay, so write a function rule to represent the total revenue. Okay, so let's start by just writing that. So let's say revenue is R. Well, I had, know my revenue is going to be made by taking the reserve seats plus the general seats. So um, let me put an E there for reserve. What we are looking for is what, what's the ex revenue that we're going to bring in for those seats. So we already know that the reserve seats are sold out. So we want to look at that. The plan allows for reserve seats 10 rows at 12 seats per row. So that means we have a 120, okay, 120 seats that we can, we already got $25 for. So 120 times 25, we get $3,000. So we already gained $3,000 just from the reserve seats. Okay, so we already know that. So all I'm doing is pulling out the information we know. 
we we're looking for the revenue. That was kind of the question. So therefore, R is a variable. So now what we want to figure out, well, what's our general seating? Okay, well, we know that what we are going to get, if we take the fact that we have 30 rows at 16 seats per row, okay, we're going to get 480 seats that we could possibly have. But what we know right now is that those seats cost $10, and we don't know how many seats we're going to sell yet. This is if we were to sell out. Okay, so that's how many seats total. But right now, we don't need to know that. Because what happens if we don't sell out? Well, then we have S seats sold. So we're going to use S. So right here is the first part. Okay, we have an expression. We have an equation that's going to represent how many seats we sell. But the second question is, what are we going to maximize? Well, again, going back to the fact that we already sold out a reserve, what happens if we sell out the general? Well, that means what we're going to do is take our revenue is going to equal the 3,000 plus 10 times the 480 seats that we would sell out for $10 a piece. So we add those together, we get 4,800 4, plus 3,000, we get $7,800 in revenue just for one night uh, for our seats. Okay, but notice where I started. I started off by just kind of using words to represent what I was talking about. We were saying revenue equals reserve seats plus general seats, and then we start piecing it together. Okay, so then we wrote our function rule. Our function rule should have one variable uh, with the numbers here equal to another, the start. And then we plug in one, known, one of the unknowns and solve. So there would be our second answer. Okay. So example two, I want you to go ahead and do on your own as well. So kind of follow that pattern. Write it out in words to start and then go from there. Okay, so problem number three now is talking about writing a function rule for the area of a rectangle whose length is five feet more than the width. Okay, so let's just start with that. Let's not even go any farther. Let's just start with that. We have a rectangle here, so draw that on your page. We have the width and we have the length. What we know is that the length is five feet more than the width. So what's five feet more than the width mean? Well, that means W plus five. Okay, so we know this length, which is L, is also W plus five. It's five more than whatever this number is. We don't know what that is though, so we use as width, W. So now it says what's the area? And again, here's the biggest thing that a lot of, a lot of students struggle with is we don't want to write down the stuff that we know. Well, I know it said area, and I know the area of a rectangle is equal to the length times the width. So just write down that formula. And since we know L is also W plus 5, what we can do is we can go down here and write W plus 5. That's my L. And then I still have my times W. And then simplify. So I'm going to distribute, and I get W squared, distribute, and I get plus 5W, and I have A equal. So there's my formula. So really, there's my equation. So that's the biggest thing, that if you write that stuff down, then your next step is going to be just easy. So as we go through, we want to know the area. So we say, well, what happens when the width is 9 feet? So now they tell us that it's 9 feet. So now I just take 9 squared plus 5 times 9. And I know this is 81 plus 45, which means my area, as I add down, is going to be 126 feet. And since we're talking area, squared. So right there's my answer. But notice that I went to my formula first. Again, a lot of us try to just solve, and the problem that we get is that we don't we miss something. We don't add right, we don't multiply right, something goes wrong in there. Okay, so here you have another example that I want you to do on your own, and then I'll check. We'll go over those tomorrow in class and see how you did, and this will be part of your notes. So make sure you do this. Um, what is the area of a triangle with that given information? So again, I want you to go ahead and write that rule out. Okay, and that's all we're going to do for today. 
That's it for four or five. It's just writing equations. But again, you have to decipher the, the story problems. It's not just a quick fix. You have to work through them. And I know we don't like story problems, but they're not going to go away. Um, so make sure you look at those. If you have any questions, be sure to hit up Edmodo or you know put something out on Twitter, see if I can help you or somebody else can help you. All right, have a good evening.